Right. <clears throat> so let's um <clears throat> let's touch on something to uh kind of help um, with clarity on the voice of God. This will help you. So listen closely. It's not the fact of if God is speaking or not. It's more so the fact, are you, are you able to recognize the voice of God? The recognition of God's voice is even more important than you hearing His voice. If you're going to move in the direction that He's guiding you in. So the sheep of God hear the voice. He said, my sheep hear my voice. So you do hear it. But the question is, are you able to recognize that voice and move with it? Now it could be that God is speaking to you in a way that maybe is something that you don't expect to be his voice. He's sending um, his voice and the messages through <clears throat> an inbox that you're not paying attention to or you're thinking that this just happened by coincidence um, and you might be missing it because you're not recognizing where he's speaking to you at or how he's speaking to you. So one of the things I want to deal with is partially of um, how God's voice sounds. Now, <clears throat> we do know that the written word is always something that God's going to speak through. I agree with that. He does lead you to scripture and um, he does speak to you through the Bible. But that's not the same voice of God um, as a rhema word. A rhema word is when God is speaking to you more direct. Um, where he's giving to you clear answers on everyday life circumstances that you're going through right now. So he will also deal with you based on um, where you are right now and guide you in your daily life circumstances and situations, giving you answers like <clears throat> perhaps maybe what job is best for you and what you should be doing right now. You know, that sort of thing, where you're getting more of a concrete answer that involves your life at this moment, rather than just a biblical Bible story of someone else. So one of the ways I want, want to help you to understand how he speaks when it comes to a direct answer in regard to your life circumstances now, at this moment, is, let me just use an example. Say you're praying for um, an answer on a relationship. You're dealing with someone, and sometimes that someone that you're dealing with seems to be the right person for you, and then sometimes they seem to be the wrong person for you. Sometimes um, they're, they're equally yoked to you, and then sometimes it seems like they're not equally yoked to you and you're confused about that relationship of whether you should stay in it or move on. You're not sure if God wants you in it or not. Okay, so say you get out of prayer. This is just one example of how the voice of God can come to you and you just have to be sensitive enough to recognize that that's what he's saying. You get out of prayer <clears throat> And the next thing you know, you end up going to the grocery store and you run into somebody at the grocery store. Um, you and that somebody at the grocery store just happen to be conversating. It could be maybe an old friend or someone like that. Um, and you're just conversating and you're talking about all kind of different stuff. And somewhere in that conversation, they bring up on their own a relationship that they used to be in that 
uh, went up and down and they decided to move on from that relationship and now they're uh, happily married with someone else and, um, and being blessed together with their partner. Now, if you're not sensitive to the voice of God, you would have missed your answer right there because <clears throat> he just gave it to you out of that natural circumstance and situation. See what I'm saying? So sometimes the voice of God can come through little packages like a conversation with somebody and they happen to, they happen to be talking about some stuff that totally lines up with exactly what you went through. And maybe all the conversation might not be that, but there might be a part of it. If you can recognize it, it could be a part of that conversation that was meant for you to hear. Because that was actually God using them to relay that message to you. Because if God's going to speak to you, more than likely he's going to use an earthen vessel. You know, um, something down here. It could be a natural situation. Uh, sometimes it could just come through a person. Somebody saying something that sounds like it's totally corresponding to a prayer that you prayed. <clears throat> and you just happened to bump into that person it just didn't happen by coincidence that's one of the things you gotta know um, there are no coincidences in God when when things happen it happens on purpose based on purpose and based on divine connection he sends it for a reason it's not a uh, coincidence so you can't take these things lightly um, Another example, let me give you a, uh, another example outside of just someone speaking to you. Um, say that you've prayed that same prayer. You're seeking for guidance on <laughs> relationships or something like that. And you try and figure out if you need to um, move on or something. Or if you need to stay. And the next thing you know, you end up getting in your car. It's a bunch of traffic out. You end up driving behind someone. And uh, the person you're driving behind happens to have a bumper sticker that says something like, keep it moving. <laughs> and you just happen to run into, out of all these cars, out of all these cars, you could have been behind anybody. Out of all these cars, you happen to run into uh, someone with a bumper sticker on the back of their car that sound like it was corresponding to your prayer and it said keep it moving and you happen to be looking at the bumper sticker when you you very easily could have not been paying attention to that so you, you got to realize how all of this was orchestrated um how it was all set up all these time frames had to come together in a, a very special way in order for that to even happen one, you had to get in the car at a certain time and be on the road at a certain time. Two, the person who had the bumper sticker had to be in front of you at a certain time. They had to be on the road at a certain time. Three, <clears throat> out of all the cars that was on the road, <clears throat> you had to get beyond all of that to pull behind the car that actually had your answer on the bumper sticker. Three, I mean, did I say three? I think I said three or four. We're somewhere, we're, we're around there somewhere. Three or four. Um, matter of fact, let me just say another thing, because I can't remember if we're on three or four. So another thing is, <clears throat> This had to all happen within the same time frame of after you prayed in order for that answer to sound like it was corresponding to your prayer. So all of this had to be set up for that very moment in order to get that answer to you. So yeah, that's another way that God might be speaking to you. He may send you to... Um, specific place at a specific time something you see stands out in all this time you never saw anything like that until you prayed and 
It just happened to be that after you pray, you end up running into all this stuff at specific timings where it seemed like things were answers to your prayer. So these are, these are other ways. You just have to catch it. Now, if you just brush it off and act like you didn't see nothing and, and um, not pay any close attention to it, then you'll miss the answer that came to you in that form. So that's one of the things you have to do. After you pray, you got to be uh, very sensitive to any circumstance and situation that you're uh, going through because um, your answer just might come through that. All right, y'all. I'm going to check out. Peace.